Hey guys, this is Puka bringing you round five of the Kenosha, Wisconsin Battle Road between uh, a player you may have heard of, Ross Cawthon on the left. Of course, he is a two-time Worlds finalist. He's qualified for ten straight World Championships. Clearly one of the best players in the world. Just moved to Chicago. So, he showed up at this Battle Road, and now he's going to be playing here. Uh, his opponent is a newer player, I believe. Um, either that or he's just aged up. His name is Cameron Cole. Uh, I don't know too much about him, but he did go undefeated to win a Battle Road a couple weeks ago in the area. And he's also placed very well in pretty much every tournament he's played so far. So, he seems to be a very good player as well. And I am sure this is going to be a great matchup between two really good players. And I don't think anyone's going to complain about getting to see a world-class player like Ross in action here. Now, for some reason, our camera was not set up at the top table. So both these players are actually 3-1 at the moment. But they're still very competitive. Uh, definitely players in the running to place highly at the event. And it should be a great game no matter what. Unfortunately, there are no top cuts at Battle Roads anymore. So they don't have a chance to win the event anymore. But they still are fighting for, you know, second, third, fourth place. Some championship points. And the games are going to be great no matter what. So I think... Even though you really can't win Battle Roads after you lose your first match, um, it it's, doesn't lessen your achievement by going X and 1. And we still see a lot of great games here. Maybe sometimes even better games. When, I mean, the players are at one loss instead of being undefeated. Who knows? Maybe we'll see a great game here. So Ross starts with two Tynamos against a Thunderous. We will see... Differing deck lists between these two players. Obviously, they're both running uh, Electric. As you can see, plenty of Lightning Pokemon. But Ross will be running a Rayquaza-centered Electric deck. And Cameron just goes more towards the Thunderous, Zekrom, uh, Mewtwo kind of deck. And we'll see which version really comes out on top here. You know, it, it's a completely different play style. Depending on what version of the deck you're running. And... They're both very powerful in their own right, but they both have their own advantages. You know, the Rayquaza EX can just blast something for 180 damage and, you know, take out an EX in one hit, no problem. Whereas the Mewtwo version can do the same, but it sometimes can be a little bit quicker. And things, you know, you can just, like, drop Mewtwo's out of nowhere and hit for, like, 100 and consistently build up your energy for big knockouts. So we'll see which one ends up being superior here. Cameron, it does not look like he drew a very good hand off of that N that Ross played. He does not have a supporter, unfortunately. He's debating what he wants to do. He could Ultra Ball here and get another Pokemon into play. Uh, there's really no good option for him. He could play an Ultra Ball and, you know, like discard a Lightning to get it in the discard pile, but then he might not have one for next turn. He's going to Ultra Ball and discard the Zekrom EX and a Switch. So he's going to keep the other Ultra Ball in his hand. He's going to value getting a second Tynamo into play. That's what it's going to look like here. And he'll go from there. Um, we can get a good look at his deck here. Looks like it is, you know, just DCEs, Mewtwo's, Max Potions. Kind of the list that Kevin Nance pioneered at U.S. Nationals this past year. Uh, but Cameron is featuring Thunderous as well, who is kind of an underrated Pokemon in this format. If you start with him, Charge is very threatening. You get two Lightning on him immediately. Uh, if your opponent knocks him out, you get Energy in your discard pile. A turn two Disaster Volt can knock out a lot of things in this format. You know, like Tynamos are targets. Um, Sableye is another good target. Even like Swablu's, even Gabite. So there are a ton of things for Thunderous to knock out on turn two. And, you know, if you can start with him and get the turn one Charge... It's still a great Pokemon. Very underrated at this point, I would say. So, this is an ideal start for Cameron. They turn one charge. But the no supporter part, not too ideal. So he's going to have to top deck a supporter sometime soon, or hope that Ross plays another end, in order to have a shot at this game. Ross, he did start with two Tynamos. We'll see what else he can get here. Uh, I know he plays the Shiny Rayquaza as well, so... 
He'll have the option to hit for 40 damage this turn with a Dragon Pulse. That will be a big deal. Um, just If he can catch her a Tynamo, knock it out. That's, I mean, pretty big. Um, just being able to go ahead and say, Alright, I'm going to knock out a Tynamo for one energy. And now I have a 120 hit point dragon threatening to hit you again. You can just drop that out of nowhere. And it, it's really one of the powerful things in this mirror match. Uh, if, if you have Rayquaza, the shiny one, and your opponent doesn't, you're probably going to be in good shape. So Ross is going to Ultra Ball away a Tool Scrapper and a Fire Energy. We'll see what he grabs. He could just grab the Rayquaza with this. He could grab an Electric. We'll see. He has a Bianca and a Juniper in hand. A lot of players would just opt to know, to, you know, just dump the whole hand, Juniper, and draw seven. Uh, but it looks like Ross, with the way he's playing his hand out, is going to play the more conservative route, which I actually prefer. Uh, there's no right or wrong way, I don't think, but Ross will take the conservative route of playing the Bianca because he realizes that N is a factor at the end of games. You want to conserve these high draw power supporters if you can, and Bianca's going to be getting him 5 this turn if, you know, he attaches to the Rayquaza, which is a really big deal. Um, Bianca for 5, it's not as good as Juniper for 7, but you always have the Juniper for next turn now. And we'll see if he plays the Sky Arrow as well. Uh, he'll probably retreat first, then play the Sky Arrow, so he can get the Lightning in the discard pile. And that's exactly what he does. Rost, of course, is an incredible player. I would expect him to probably do things even better than I would predict. Um, he'll always be on top of things. And I'll be shocked to see him, I mean, even come close to making anything near a mistake. Um, this is what you expect from one of the best players in the world. the most, One of the most consistent players in the world. And, you know... Don't count Cameron out. Um, he is a great player in his own right. But a guy like Ross, uh, it's someone that you really don't want to face in a tournament because you know he's experienced. You know he's probably not going to ever make a mistake. And it's going to be tough to beat him. So he will Ultra Ball here for a Raikou EX. Ross realizes, all right, Raikou is kind of the name of the game in this matchup. The mirror match is dictated by how many electrics can I get into play. If I don't get any, well, my opponent's just going to be able to dynamotor, fuel all of his attackers, and, you know, he's going to win. Pretty straightforward. Um, so I need to take out his electrics and keep mine in play. That's going to be the way to win. Uh, now, he will just Dragon Pulse for 40. He discards two cards there. I couldn't quite see what they were. They were off camera. I think one was a Tynamo. That is the downside to using Dragon Pulse with Rayquaza. You do have to discard the top two cards of your deck. Sometimes you can get lucky and discard a Lightning Energy, but sometimes it's going to cost you, you know, maybe like a Catcher or a Supporter or, in this case, a Tynamo. And then Cameron's just going to take a look to see what you discard. It looks like, yeah, he did discard a Catcher. So you only get four of those in a deck, and that's a big deal. This might be why Ross decided to go right for Raikou. Uh, overall, Raikou is extremely good in the mirror match because it's going to be simple for you to just, like, Volt Bolt, knock out an electric. You don't need a catcher to knock out your, your opponent's electric. That's the big deal. And unless your opponent is playing Rayquaza, he won't be able to knock out your Raikou in one hit. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> So Raikou, at first we did not see this deck or this card featured in electric decks because people were so afraid of Terrakian, but now it's like, no, Volt Bolt is actually really good. Doing a hundred anywhere, it's good in just about every matchup, unless you're facing like a straight Terrakian deck, and it's not very good, but for the most part, it's extremely good. Now Ross here is going to reach he's actually going to switch his figures might as well just play my switch uh no harm no foul there he's going to switch into his tynamo um you might wonder why he's not switching to a different pokemon uh, i think it's just to keep his options open if he can get a lightning in the discard pile 
and then draw a fire energy. He can just use Dragon Burst for 60 to knock out this Thunderous. If he gets an Ultra Ball and then a Lightning Energy, he could Dynamotor to Raikou and attach to it and then Volt Bolt this turn. So he's putting the Tynamo up in the active and it'll have free retreat with Skyor Bridge just to give him as many options as possible to get a knockout this turn. And he didn't seem to get an Ultra Ball or anything. No way to get Lightning in the discard pile. So he's just going to level ball for another Tynamo. And he might have to resort to... I mean, he could either Dragon Pulse for 40, and then he'll probably get knocked out by Thunderous. Or Thunderfang with Raikou and go for the Paralysis. Since it's just 30 and 30, that would be a knockout on that Thunderous. Now... Rossi's getting his third Tynamo into play. He'll be able to retreat and evolve this Tynamo that's in the active spot right now. I would assume he'll go for the Thunderfang, just knowing that Cameron's hand is so small, and Cameron has not played a supporter yet. And, I mean, if he gets heads on the Paralysis, he knows Cameron's already discarded a Switch early on in the game. And there's no real downside to this, I don't think. Even if he gets Tails, and he did. Right now, Cameron, he's got to top deck something. you got to feel bad for him. He has nothing going for him, but this is just kind of what happens in this format sometimes. Uh, you just draw nothing. I don't know how else to put it. You just don't draw supporters sometimes. There's no smear gold to fall back on. Nothing like that. There's no Cleffa. Uh, I mean, just no support Pokemon in general. The best we have as a general support Pokemon is Virizion in the format, which is just paying energy to draw two cards, which in most cases is just not worth your time, not worth the spot in the deck. Uh, you would rather just play a, another supporter in most cases. And I think Cameron's just feeling the effects of the format right now. Sometimes you just don't draw a supporter the entire game. Hopefully he does sometime soon. Um, I mean... Hopefully he gets to show off his deck, and we'll see how he got to such a winning record at these other two tournaments that I've seen him been at, be at so far. But so far, everything is going Ross's way. He has complete setup. Triple electric. He just Volt Bolted away at Tynamo. He's got the Rayquaza EX on the bench. He's got the regular Rayquaza with an energy. Cameron's okay, just going to take a look at Ross's discard. See, all right, what have you gotten rid of so far? Are there any holes I can exploit? Is there any way I can come back from this? Uh, I mean, granted Cameron's only down one prize, but just kind of look at the situation. He has a Thunderous, which is about to have two energy, and a Tynamo. And that's it. No supporter. No options. No nothing. Last turn he made a good play by using the Max Potion to just kind of let his Thunderous survive. Because he realizes that this is really going to be my only hope in this game. I need to buy time for as long as possible, keep my Thunderous alive, and just kind of pray that Ross whiffs something one turn or just cannot finish me off. Maybe I can top deck an N at some point. Uh, maybe catch up his Electric and start hitting his bench with my own Raikou. Because this matchup can swing around very easily. Electric is always a liability with its two retreat cost. And I've seen plenty of mirror matches just come down to, alright, one person catches out their opponent's Electric. They play an N. And then Volt Bolt the bench. And then the Electric is stuck in the active position. And there's nothing that, I mean, you can do about it. Um, and Ross's version is even more susceptible to this sort of thing since he won't play double colorless energy which is really good for helping you retreat and electric. He does play four switch, I believe, which is pretty necessary in this kind of a deck, since, like I said, you don't play double colorless. But you can run out of switches very easily. I think he's gone through two already. That was his second one there. So he'll have two left at the most, and then if you just get N down to a low number of cards, you're going to end up losing. And once again, he's going to Volt Bolt and knock out a Tynamo. And, I mean, Cameron, he is drawing absolutely nothing. He's playing his hand down to zero. He's ultra-balling. I don't even know what he can take at this point. 
Best option might be Zekrom, honestly. Since it's not an EX, has 130 hit points, and might be able to survive. Looks like he's going to go for Mewtwo. I might still prefer Zekrom. Just, I mean, he's, he's a big body, and he's not going to give up two prizes as you're attempting to come back here. But it looks like he's going to go for Mewtwo. I don't actually think it matters that much. There is really not much Cameron can do. It's really unfortunate. He does not have anything in hand. And we might just see Ross slowly roll over him here. Um, well, he might make it quick because there's only two Pokemon left on Cameron's board. And he's just going to charge for the third time this game. So from him, we've just seen three charges and one Disaster Bolt. Ouch. Anyway, Ross, you got to think he's going to be able to take a prize this turn. He actually might not be able to, though. He, If he doesn't draw a Fire Energy, he won't be able to use Dragon Burst, which is the only way he's going to be able to get a knockout here. We saw he has one Fire in the discard, one on the active. So unless he draws a Fire, he won't actually be able to get a knockout here. And if he doesn't get a knockout, we'll see what he decides to do. He could go for a Thunder Fang, just hit for 30, and then next turn, you know, just go for it. Um, it looks like exactly what he's going to do, actually. This is one of the bad parts about running the Rayquaza version. You do need the two different types of energy, and sometimes you just don't draw the fire. Uh, you might have to discard them early on. You might attach them to different places, like Ross put it on the Raikou here, and you just might not draw them. Whereas with the Mewtwo version, all you need is just colorless energy. So even if you don't draw your double colorless, you can still just attack with lightning energy. No harm, no foul. But Ross here, he whiffs his fire energy. This really won't be a big deal. He just... It looks like he's just in a, such a dominant position. He has three electrics. Uh, a, a Rayquaza EX sitting there just needing a fire to really knock out anything. The only thing not going his way is... Hitting for 30 <laughs> with uh, the, the Raikou and then not paralyzing. Looks like Cameron just draw a catcher, which will give him a little glimmer of hope because he's going to take a prize. Maybe he'll get a supporter off his prize. If he does, that will be an easy uh, way for him to come back. Of course, he's going to need an N more than anything. But that will be his only shot. And it looks like Ross draws that fire energy. That's going to be big. And puts down a second Raikou for good measure. A lot of people don't play two Raikou in their electric deck, but I actually like it quite a bit. Raikou is kind of an underrated attacker, even though you know he's good. People don't quite understand how good it is. And you can just get into a situation where you're just, every turn, going back and forth. Volt bolting between your Raikous. And you can just do 100 everywhere. Every turn. And, well, not everywhere. You can do 100 to a Pokemon every turn, and it's pretty strong. Because you don't even have to attach anymore if you have enough electrics in play. You just keep using Dynamo, or you have the Sky Arrow Bridge in play, and hey, Cameron got a supporter. He got an end, finally. Alright, this could be his chance to come back. Now, granted, it's going to be really tough for him to come back. Ross has been fairly good about playing out as many cards as he can to make N as ineffective as possible. He's played two switches so far. He already has that fully powered Rayquaza. So really Cameron needs to draw a catcher and another basic here to make sure he lives through the turn. Uh, if he draws a catcher, he's going to bring up Electric, try to buy some time. And really he's just going to hope that Ross runs out of steam. I don't think he has any other choice here. So let's see what he gets off his five cards. It looks like he does draw the catcher. So he's going to catch her for an electric. That's exactly what he needs to do, but there's no basic, unfortunately. He's going to put the DCE on his Mewtwo and X-Ball for 40. Now, if Ross draws a switch, this game is all over. And he's just going to Dragon Burst to knock out poor Mewtwo. So what's Ross going to get off this random receiver? He gets a Bianca. All right. Now, if you got an N, obviously that would not have been good for him. He would have only drawn three cards. He gives Cameron a better hand, and yeah, that's no good. So the fact that he got Bianca here was a really good thing. Um, it was either Bianca or Juniper, what he wanted, and he got the Bianca. So random receiver paying off there. 
He's also got an Ultra Ball in hand, which he can just use to draw six if he really wants to. He can use the Ultra Ball or attach to the Electric. Uh, if he uses the Ultra Ball, he could just fail it and then draw six cards this turn. Uh, he could grab a Pokemon. Actually, I don't think there are any Pokemon left in his deck now that I look. But he's just going to look at it, fail, and he'll draw six cards here. Odds are he's going to draw a Switch, and he'll just win the game here. But here we go. Bianca will draw six, and looks like there's a Switch. And that's going to be the game. Dragon Burst. Unfortunate for Cameron. He played one supporter on his last turn of the game. Uh, everything went Ross's way that game. But Ross will improve to 4-1, and one. Cameron will fall to 3-2. and two. I wish we could have seen a better match there, but sometimes that's what happens. It looks like electric decks are especially prone to these uh, kind of crap-out starts where you just don't get anything going for a while. And this is just one of those games. So thanks for watching, guys. We'll be back with round 6 here from the Kenosha, Wisconsin Battle Road soon. I've been Puka, and we'll be back for the next one.